It's the battle of the undefeateds. The West Bloomfield Lakers come in tonight to take on the Lake Orion Dragons. We've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Pre-game is underwritten by Malasha's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. The Malash family has been providing Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-814-2222. Good evening everyone, with Chris Fritching, I'm Doug Corliss. It's week four already. It is. Yeah. <laughs> West Bloomfield comes in and Chris, the Dragons are ranked. West Bloomfield is ranked. We went through it so many times when you get a ranking and the kids read the rankings too. This squad has done a great job of not paying any attention to that stuff. You know, you're right, and Coach Bell does a good job of doing that. I mean, the rankings are the rankings. You come out here and play football. That's what you got to do. That's your job. And so the focus has got to be on the here and the now. Um, you know, win the play, win the quarter, win the half. That's how you win the football game. And then, by the way, to do that, you got to play mistake free. You, you have to eliminate the penalties. You have to eliminate the turnovers. You have to, tonight, you're going to have to win a game in time of possession, I think, is really important, too, to keep that West Bloomfield offense off the field. And if, if you can do those things tonight, you can go out on top and win a football game against a really good West Bloomfield team. West Bloomfield comes in. They have a new head coach in Zach Hilbers. He's no stranger. He was a quarterback coach. He's been around for a long time. And I guess the best way to put it is they're, as usual, they're stocked. They've got multiple Division I athletes and a three-year starting quarterback in Raquez Nance. Yeah, I know, you know, five Division I commits. Uh, defensive back Jameer Benjamin is going to Northwestern. Defensive lineman Brandon Davis Swain is going to Colorado to play with Coach Prime there. Yeah. Um, linebacker Kari Jackson at Penn State. Uh, Montel Johnson, Rutgers. Bryce Rowe at CMU, and all those, that's just on one side of the ball. Yeah, they play some offense as well, but but when it's all said and done, you've got playmakers over there, guys that are going to play at high levels at the next level. And so that's tough to, to compete against no matter what level you're at. And so, and like you said, uh, Rick was, uh, Nance, who is a senior this year, three-year starter, threw for over 3,000 yards last year, over 30 touchdowns. They spread the ball horizontally. They've got the speed to go vertically. So that Lake Orion defense has really gotten better over the last couple of weeks. After that, that about a quarter and a half last yeah. week we saw against Oxford, they really clamped down and really shut Oxford down. So um, they're going to have their, their work cut out for them defensively. But uh, I, I think you said before we were on there, this is going to be a track meet. There's no question yeah. about it. And that's what makes uh, high school football tonight fun. In the OAA, after tonight, the Red Division, will only have one undefeated team, and that's who wins here tonight. And if you look, every division has a three-way tie at the top. It's closing in, but like in our division, there's still only one undefeated team, and everybody's clumping up behind whoever wins tonight. It sounds like, you know, it's almost like the OAA at all divisions is like the NFL. You want parity. You want yeah. you want competition from week one in this case to week nine. Uh, you know you got Clarkston in the red tonight. You've got Clarkston and Stony Creek. You've got Oxford and Adams. And then next week they're going to beat up on each other. Lake Orion, Stony Creek, Clarkston, Oxford, Adams, West Bloomfield. I mean everyone's beating up on one another. And uh, but that's what makes OAA red football. As we always talk about so great in that it's uh you've got to be ready to play week in week out and if you're not that's when you fall down those standings and you don't win those championships yeah. well as has been said before should be a good one stay with us pregame has been underwritten by malash's palace chrysler dodge jeep and ram the malash family has provided automotive services to the Lake Orion community since the 1950s. Stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. 
just before kickoff. The West Bloomfield Lakers and the Lake Orion Dragons. Hey, the first quarter tonight is underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of ONTV since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. Players are lined up in the tunnel and the Dragons take the field. West Bloomfield is led by head coach Zach Hilbers. He's in his first year, but he's been around for a long time as the quarterback's coach of the Lakers. Last year, West Bloomfield finished 8-2, eight 8-1 and two, eight and one in the regular season, and then they lost to Cass Tech in the first round of the playoffs. Always has been a barn burner between these two teams. Coach Bell telling me before the game that you don't like to see a track meet, but it may be one tonight. With all the speed out there you're gonna to see tonight, it's going to be. I mean, yeah. call it what you will. A lot of these kids are playing to are running track and, and so forth, but uh, you know, athletes on both sides of the field and, and speed and physicalness, and that's what you want to see in a football game. Absolutely. Teams are lining up. West Bloomfield is just lining up in the south end zone to make their entrance to the field. Talking with head coach Hilbers before the game, it seems like their numbers are down a little bit, and he, he admitted that their numbers are down somewhat, but, you know, Lake Orion's numbers are down this year too. Sometimes it's an ebb and flow of, of people into the community. Yep. Sometimes it's, you know, because I've talked to, in, in my other role at, uh, you know, I, I talked to some programs that uh, they're, their numbers are going up dramatically. So it's just like an ebb and flow of people in the community and the success of the teams and the programs and a combination of a lot of things. But uh, bottom line, whether there's 60 people on a, on a roster or 80 people on a roster or 40 people, you play 11 on 11. There it is. The band is ready. The teams are lined up on the sidelines. And we will pause as the Dragon Marching Band leads us in the Star Spangled Banner. Welcome to the podium, LOHS Assistant Band Director, Caitlin Shanks, as she leads the Dragon Marching Band in the Star Spangled Banner. Officials for tonight's game, the referee is Fred Castle-Vateris. Headlinesman is Bob Kelly. Line judge, the Oxford Flash, Mike Dunn. 
umpire is Brett Turner. The back judge is Mick Timko. Tom Mastrovito is the field judge. And Al Fragnoli is the side judge. It is a crew that works a lot in the OAA. One of the premier crews, actually, in the league. Dragons won the toss, deferred to the second half. They will defend the goal to the south. Not much wind tonight. Flag up in the northeast corner of the end zone, hanging fairly limp. West Bloomfield drops two deep, number six. Cameron Flowers and number 24, Bryce Rowe. Will Hoffman will tee it up on the 40. We always go over with some of these players, ask them, hey, what do you want to be called? And I asked Ho Will Hoffman today, I said, what do you want to be called? Bill, Will? And he said, I'm not used to that. Usually around the football field, everybody just calls me Hoffman. <laughs> so we'll, we'll at least call him Will. At least he didn't say call me kicker. There you go. Right? Yeah. Referee Fred Castlevateri blows his whistle. Hoffman approaches, and we're underway. Short kick taken on the six. Up to the 20, up to the 28, and out of bounds where the Lakers will take over first and 10. Nice return by Bryce Rowe. He's that defensive back, uh, kick returner obviously in this case, who's committed to Central Michigan. So we're going to hear him uh, talk about him tonight, as well as many others on that uh, West Bloomfield Lakers team. Requez Nance is the quarterback. We talked about him in pregame, three-year starter. West Bloomfield comes out with trips right, single wide left, empty backfield. Nance from the shotgun. Low snap. Throw back, complete to number two, Marquis Norris. And he's dropped for about a six yard loss on first down. Yeah, Katie DeGraffin Reed did a nice job of splitting that. Bu that, that that trips formation over there, getting inside on that uh, short throw, make it a great play for a big loss on the play for the first time. You're going to hear Gra the Graffin read all day too, right? Yeah. Another kid that's playing at Howard Absolutely. University, yes. Five wides for the Lakers. Trips left, twins right. Stack formation to the right side. Nance back, looks, throws, picked off the Graffin read. At the 23 yard line. Step. Go ahead. Yeah, he just stepped right in front of Marquise Morris. I don't know if Nance, it's kind of sunny over there, and, and I don't know if they're the, the, the shading over there with the sun had any effect on That's a long throw from this side of the field to throw to the far side of the field. The Graffery did a great job stepping inside. We've talked his. He's made two huge plays defensively in the first two plays of the game for the Dragons. How about that? T.R. Hill leads him out. Billy Roberson will be the lone back in the backfield. Raymond Payne split far right. Now he comes over in a slot left. Joe Debrinkett lined up on a wing right. Payne in motion. Roberson up the middle. Gets a gain of about six. It'll be second down. Yeah, Roberson comes into today, 61 carries, 422 yards, averaging almost seven yards a carry, six touchdowns. Well, obviously here, us uh, calling Billy Roberson's name all night long. Second down, Cooper split wide to the left, Dom Novak in a slot left. Toss back to Roberson, cuts it upfield. Close to the first down. He's going to be about a yard and a half short. It'll be third down. 
This is a play early on in the game. Obviously, the two big defensive plays for the Dragons, but this is a, it's a situation where you've got to convert not just points, three points. You've got to convert touchdowns. You've got to score when you can, especially when you're inside the red zone like this. Double wide, double slot for the Dragons on third down. To bring it in motion. Handoff. And Payne's going to get smothered for about a four-yard loss. It's going to be fourth down and call it five. Brandon Davis Swain, uh, 6'4", 260. He's the one who's committed to the University of Colorado. Um, he's a guy that's very tough to block at this high school level. We'll talk about him all night long as well. Will Hoffman on for the field goal attempt. Vasquez holding. It'll be 36 yards. Ball's down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. The Dragons capitalize on the turnover with an early field goal and take a 3 to nothing lead. The scoreboard for the first half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full-service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000 or visit their website for more information. And just like that, the Dragons get their early lead. They do. You know, and I, here's what I'm going to say. We're not even three minutes into the football game, right? But I almost feel like two huge defensive plays by the Graffin Reed for the Dragons. Yet at the same time, while Lake Orion is up 3-0, no, mm -hmm. I feel like the Lakers came out having won that drive in, in that, yes. you know, Lake Orion had the ball so deep in their territory and they were only able to come away with three. We're going to see how, if that has any effect later on in the game. Exactly. Hoffman has it teed up on the 40. He approaches. End over end kick taken on the six. Cut right and drop at the 11. Joe DeBrinkett came in and stoned number six, Cameron Flowers. That's a great open field tackle. Great open field tackle to force the Lakers to start well inside their 20 yard line. Actually at the, what is that, the 12 yard line. Calling it the 12. They're, they're a quick strike offense. Make them drive, play the field position game on special teams you got a good shot to, to win football games that way. Nance on the handoff. Cutting outside, being chased by DeGraffin Reed is number 12, Jameer Benjamin. Oh, is that number 13? Yep. Number 13, Josh Tate. Eight yard gain, it'll be second and two. West Bloomfield again, single wide left, twins right. I formation alongside Nance. Nance holding it. He's going to run for it, and he picks up the first down. Aaron Leitz in on the tackle, among others. That's the thing, too. It went, when... when Nance can throw the ball, as we talked about earlier, over 3,000 large yes, last year, over 30 touchdowns. But boy, oh boy, when, when nobody's open downfield, which is very rare, yeah. <laughs> he can scramble, he can run. He know, he's got some good vision. He can find the, he finds the sticks, and he did that time. First and 10, trips to the right, single wide left. Handoff up the middle, jammed up at the point of attack, breaks free, and taken down by DeBrinkett was Tate. A great job of the Dragons defense because I think everyone thought that he was bottled up and they didn't hear a whistle. They kept coming. They kept fighting and DeBrinko had a nice job. Didn't get outside. Lost a yard. Second down 11. Couple extra defensive backs check in for the Dragons on second and 11. I formation in the backfield. Nance operates pretty much exclusively out of the shotgun. Handoff jammed up again, and breaking free is Tate. 
Look at how many green jerseys are yeah. around that ball carrier. And it's really a good balance shown by Tate. He's broken tackles on his last two carries and gained some positive yardage. He's gained positive yardage, but he's not getting past that second level. Right. And that's the key for the Dragons. If they can play football like that all night long, they're going to be in great shape. It's going to be third and seven. Four wides for West Bloomfield on third down. The store Lake Orient's got to be good on third down. Un their opponents are under 30% on third down coming into tonight's game. Nance back to throw. Hit as he throws. Caught. And taken down by DeGraffin Reed is Alicia Durham. But he's got enough for a first down for the Lakers. Yeah, you're darn right he was hit when he threw, but he stayed He stayed poised. That's a long throw again from that side of the field over here. It kind of hung, but he was wide open enough to make the, the, the catch of the first down. Nice play by the Lakers. Twins left, single wide right. Hand off, up the middle. Stoned after no gain. Tate on the carry. To Graffin Reed and to Brinkett in on the stop. And Peyton McIntyre in. No gain, second and ten. Closing in on 5.30 to go here in the opening quarter. Dragons up three to nothing. Nance looking to Coach Hilbers for the play. Throw out to the left flat intended for Jaden Altos, Atlos, and he just led him too far. He did, and again, I think, I don't know if it was that time too, but that the, the, the sun is kind of setting on that far side of the field. I don't know if that has an effect on anything, but that ball is in the, or the, the uh, Alice that time was in the vision of the sun. And I don't know, again, never got his hands up for it. I don't know if it was too high or not, but I uh, never even saw it. It would bother the wide receivers more than anyone. Nance back to throw, got good protection. Now being rushed down, he goes. Tyler Ratliff. Great, yeah. jo great oh. job with the pass rush. They came from the outside in. Nance has to step up in the pocket. He's not a very tall quarterback. He's only listed at 5'10". They did a great job of concealing him into the middle, knocking him down. You try to push him up in the pocket, he has nowhere to go. Dragons, nice job defensively. And give Ratliff some extra credit for hustle because he never gave up on the play. Vasquez back deep for the Dragons on fourth down, fourth and 15. High snap. Vasquez makes a fair catch on the punt from Jaden Atlos. So the Dragons will take over first and 10 at the 31 yard line. And replays tonight are underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orient area. Proud supporters of ONTV since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. Beautiful night here in Lake Orient. Temperature in the low 60s at game time. Mixture of sun and clouds. Billy Roberson. Between the tackles, gains about three. It'll be second down. Dragons going hurry up. Dom Novak splits out to the left. Raymond Payne wide right. Robeson. Heading outside, caught in the backfield and dropped. Blake Simmons chased him down. Roberson's fast. 
You know what, Blake Sims, Simmons was faster on that play. He's a sophomore. Yeah. He's playing a nice job. He did a nice job of running horizontally to the line of scrimmage, and Roberson was never able to turn the corner to get upfield. Third and 10 for the Dragons from the 31. Trips left, single wide right. Is Jamari Cooper. TR back to pass. Gets a couple initially hit by Brody Piker. Piker. And Simons finished it up. West Bloomfield did a good job of containing T.R. Hill that yeah. time, you know, and, and so both defenses are playing well in that they're, they're containing the quarterbacks when they're able to scramble. Um, as a result, we're seeing another punt. Will Hoffman back in punt formation. First punt for the Dragons, that is, but yeah. second punt here in the game. High snap. High punt taken on the 29. Cuts up field to about the 38 is number three, Nigel Dunton. And West Bloomfield will take over first and 10 on the 39 yard line. You know, West Bloomfield ranked third in division one, Lake Orion ranked number nine in division one, I mean, When's the last time both these teams at this stage of the game were, were 3-0? And I know the kids don't look at the rankings, but we do, and there's a <laughs> lot of OAA teams ranked throughout the state. Nance throws out to the right side, intended for Caleb Cottle, incomplete. So again, I, I, that's the third time now I've mentioned that's a long throw from that side, far side of the field. And that time Nance never got his feet underneath him. His, his stride was too long, and as, as a result, the stride was too long, and as a result, the ball ended up short. Yep. So second and 10. Twins right, one wide receiver left with a a wing right. Nance back to Watch throw. Watch the vertical. Look. Going deep. Caught. Number 14, Elijah Durham caught it right over the fingertips of Aaron Leitz. And a big gain for the Lakers. I mean, he leaped perfectly, full extension. You go meet the ball and you catch the ball in the fingertips, brought it down with the defender draped all over him. That's a heck of a play by Durham. Heck of a throw by Nance. First and 10, handoff inside, drop immediately. Carson Negre in on the tackle. Now I know they've watched film all week long and, and, and on, all th on all three of the games, but here's the good pre pocket presence there, good protection up front. Look at up and over the top with two defenders on him. Great catch by Durham. But what this does for the Lakers is allows them to, you know, now Lake Orion's thinking, okay, they can complete this. Even though Lake yes. Orion has seen this in film for the last three weeks, uh, three games of, of the Lakers, uh, they've now witnessed it live, and so that opens up the field and the opportunities for the Lakers quite a bit. On second down, Nance on the carry, inside the 10 to the 6. Again, there's a, there's a prime example. You spread them out horizontally, even though you're inside the 15-yard line, and you can't really go too much deep. You spread them out horizontally. That allows Nance to run that quarterback sneak, quarterback draw there. It's third down and call it six from the seven as we're under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Stack formation to the left, three wide receivers stacked and West Bloomfield's gonna take a timeout.
And thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and much more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. Third down and six. Motion to the left, Nance. Looking, looking, getting pressure, and throws it away. Got some Brand pressure. I'm sorry. Go Brandon ahead, Smith made an effort for it, but he was throwing that away. It's interesting because I think if Nance would have simply turned his shoulders, there, there was green grass. Yeah. There was green. They had three receivers to his left side of the field. If he turns and looks, I think he could tuck and run. Good for the Dragons, though. Incomplete. So number 43, Justin Ward, a sophomore kicker, will be out to try a 24-yard field goal attempt. Nigel Dunton, Denton will hold. And <clears throat> delay a game against West Bloomfield. So that'll back them up five. And that's a bad thing to have happen when you're trying a field goal. So he'll try it again from 29. Ball is down. Kick is up. We have a marker down on the field. I think it's going to be against Lake Orion. Dead ball encroachment by the Dragons. So that'll move it back up to the original line and make it a 24 yard attempt. Lake Orion just reciprocated, right? There it is. Give it right back. It's fourth down and six. Still fourth down and six. They're gonna call it a 20, yeah, 24 yards. He'll try it again. Dragons coming in on the rush. And he put it through. 42.6 seconds. Left here in the first quarter, we're tied at three. And the first quarter in the OAA Red Clarkston zero, Stony Creek zero. Hey, why don't you go mobile on ONTV anytime? Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or I guess it's called X now, right? And YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our studio. See upcoming events and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. ONTV, working to bring Lake Orion to the world. So, so far, it's been more of a defensive struggle than what we had anticipated. Hasn't quite been the track meet, and that's with a big yet. De I was going to say defensive struggle and, and uh, three, three to three, uh, yeah. <laughs> a field goal game. I would have never expected that. Oh. But that's why you come to the ballpark. I guess it's not a ballpark. Uh, you come to the stadium. You come to the stadium to find what, uh, what's going on. And yeah, I, I always, back when I was going to games, my, my dad always wanted to leave Lions games or whatever games we're going to to beat the traffic. I said, you just never know what you're going to you miss. Why would you want to leave? Same thing here. You never know what you're going to see. Uh, we're seeing a good football game defensively so far tonight. Jackson Vasquez and Billy Roberson deep for the Dragons. High kick into the end zone. Dragons will take over. First and ten on the twenty. Yeah, I've left this. I've left the Silver Dome and have left Ford Field 
early many times and regretted it later. <laughs> you better might not be leaving early this year. Oh boy, especially <laughs> Sunday. In case you've been on a desert island somewhere, uh, the Lions have their home opener at Ford Field this weekend, and they're expecting, what, about 65,000 in a 62,000 seat stadium? Standing room only tickets, you name it. Yeah. It's gonna be exciting. Just like it is here tonight, exciting. Good crowd again on the Orion sideline. Dragons have twins to the left, single wide right. Handoff, Roberson breaks a tackle. Gets over to 30, up near the third, up over to 35 to the 37. Good run on first down by Billy Roberson. Yeah, nice cut back off tackle by Roberson. And look at the vision. You, you see it right, boom, there's the cutback. Missed tackle right there. Great blocking downfield. Put the ball, put the head down, cover that football up. First down, Dragons. And Dom Novak just kind of gave him the cue of which way to go. Yeah, that's all you need. And, and, and when a good running back like Roberson's got his head up, he can see those things and adjust accordingly. He did just that. First and 10 from the 37. As we get to the end of the first quarter, the Dragons will not run a play. We played one. Lake Orion and West Bloomfield tied at three. Hey, today's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting Program and Orion Neighborhood Television. Last school year, the Lake Orion High School Broadcast Program was the defending champion and still is the defending champion of best overall program in the country. They have brought you over 80 live sporting events and plan to match that again this year. And don't forget, you can catch our award-winning daily live newscast, Hello AM. Tune in at dragonbroadcasting.org. And while we have a minute, we'll also tell filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood, Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 5th, at the ONTV studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and line of dialogue that is to be included in their film. You'll have until Tuesday, 6 October 19th at 6 p.m. to submit. And we'll finish the read after this play, which is first and 10 for the Dragons from the 37. Roberson again. Tries to cut it up field off left tackle. Gets maybe a yard. Okay, back to our read on Wednesday, the 11th of October. The films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at the Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages. It costs $25 per team to enter, and the winners will receive a cash prize. The contest benefits the North Oakland Community Coalition Program. To register, go to www.orionontv.org. TR on the keeper, breaks a couple tackles. Gets up to the 45. It'll be third down and two. Slippery that play. Broke a couple tackles, kept his balance, and more important, kept his field awareness where he was on the football field. Again, we talked about his, his progress and his maturity and his growth last week a lot in the Oxford game, and uh, that's a prime example of some, some more of that right there, right there. First and 10, twins left, single wide right. Roberson smothered in the backfield by guess who? Brandon Davis Swain. Yeah, it's a kid uh, who plays both sides of the football. His preference is to play defense, and you saw that right there coming into tonight's game. 24 tackles, five sacks. Teams rarely run to his side of the field for obvious reasons, and that was uh, evident right there. Brings up fourth down. Will Johnson drops into punt formation. And Nigel Dunton 
is deep for the Lakers. He's back at the 18 yard line. High snap again. Wobbly kick. And is downed at the 20 yard line. They're going to call it the 21 yard line where West Bloomfield will take over first and 10. I think Corian's acting as if it bounced maybe off of Bryce Rowe, who was protecting the ball hawk, the gunner on this side, but uh, it did not. He was in the neighborhood. He of was. He was. So West Bloomfield takes over first and 10. Front four for the Dragons. Lane Garris at a left defensive end. Nance from the gun. Out on the flat and drop. Is that a live ball? Nope, they're calling it incomplete. That was very close to being a lateral. No, that and that's you know that ball was thrown low too, and it's just like that's the second, maybe the third throw that Nance has thrown low and into the dirt or into the turf. And so again, I don't know if it's his footing or stuff. I, I mentioned the last time uh, his stride was too long, and as a result, his his uh, throw was low. He didn't have to rush that. He had time uh, on that quick little hitch. Quick little screen, but once again low. It, it, the odd thing is, you know, t coming in tonight, we got two teams, that, one coming in averaging 40 points a game in Lake Corian and Lake uh, Must Bloomfield averaging 34, and we're just not seeing the offenses step up tonight Nance, so far. lots of time, looks, throws, complete. Over the 40-yard line to Elisha Durham. And Nance had some really happy feet back there. Well, he had all day to throw, too. And that's what, when you're not getting a pass rush, we're not getting pressure on him, he can afford to do that and allow Durham to come open. And, and on the back end, it's tough to, to be able to cover guys for that long. And so there's got to be more of a dragon pass rush so Lance doesn't have all day to throw. First and 10 from the West Bloomfield 45. Handoff up the middle. And Dunton gets a couple. They're going to give him four. It'll be second down. They got it marked at the 49-yard line. Garris on the stop for the Dragons. Second down. Nance got pressure. I think they're going to get to brink it on a face mask. No, I think they're going to. And gonna, there's a late flag again. I think they're going to get a hold in the backfield. We have another flag down here at the Lake Orion 39. Marquise Morris was coming and going to about to blindside block Carson Negri. He, he kind of held up, but I think that's where the penalty was thrown. Um, he scraped him a little bit. They might be waving this one off here at the 40. And they're going to call the hold in the back in the, the penalty in the backfield. Because yeah. Jabrinkit was the one putting the pre pressure yeah. on Nance. And he had a head of steam heading toward him. Debrinka came to the outside. Nance came up inside the, the pass rush. And that's when I think the left tackle hooked him. Let's see if I saw that right with my own eyes. Coach Bell is out there advising the officials on what he saw. So we'll see what... Referee Fred Castleviteris decides. We have holding against West Bloomfield. Here's Debrinket. Oh yeah, he hugs him. He hooks yeah. him all the, all the way, and then Nance gets up and inside. That's a clear hold. Then he's got all day to run, but he's got all day to run because the yeah. I'm sorry, it's not the left tackle, it's the back trying to pick him up. Number nine, Kari Jackson. Correction, Nigel Dunton. You just can't block that way. No, you can't. 
but he's coming from the opposite side of the formation to come across and get to Brinkin, and he was just trying to protect his quarterback. So the holding penalty is in force. The ball's back at the 39. Out Nant cut. Looks, throws, got a receiver on the outside. Cameron Flowers, he's up to the 46. It'll be third down and nine for the Lakers. So if you're West Bloomfield, because you've completed a ball deep and you know their speed vertically, you're going to force the defensive backs to sit back and you can complete those underneath those outcuts and so forth. So now if you're the Dragons, you, you know, fourth and nine, you got to put pressure on Nance. Third and nine, twins right, single wide left. Going deep, got a receiver caught. That's Flowers again, inside the 35 to the 32 on third down. Yeah, good pressure by the Dragons though up front, but uh, again, Nance doing a nice job. The veteran quarterback, the three-year starter, stands poised, stands uh, tough. Nice pitch and catch for a big first down. First and 10, offset eye, Nance back. Got pressure, throws, got a host of Dragon, and it was knocked by Andrew Parker, went up and tried to knock it down and knocked it right into the receiver's hands for a touchdown. How did Durham come up with that ball? I think Durham drew a flag post possession. I agree. I think he was looking over, standing over Parker. Parker had a great play on the ball to go up and knock it down, and he just knocked it right into the receiver's hands. We'll that's see. One, that's one of those things. He just it was thrown up, and you know, both balls that have been completed deep have just kind of been thrown up. Yeah. And allowing the athletes to go up and make a play. And the Dragons had great coverage on that play. In, in both instances. But the Lakers wide receivers are making better plays. We have a touchdown, and post-possession is an unsportsmanlike conduct on West Bloomfield. And they're probably, they're going to, Lake Orion will take it on the kickoff. So Justin Ward is on for the point after. Ball's down, kick is up and blocked. Whistle blew before the snap. We have a procedure penalty, false start against West Bloomfield. That'll back him up five. Put the spot on the seven. Seven and a half. And Ward will set up from the 15, make it a 25 yard point after. Falls down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 7.40 to go. West Bloomfield jumps out to a 10 to 3 lead. Hey, tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on ONTV. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand. It's www.orionontv.org. So, 144 yards for Elijah Durham 
in the first quarter and four minutes and 20 seconds. Wow. He's caught a, a ball for 54, I'm sorry, 13 yards, 54 yards, 25 yards, 22 yards, and 32 yards. Wow. So um, number 14 someone I know they've circled before and watched yeah. a lot of tape on and this, that, and the other, but they're going to have to put a bigger target on number 14 because uh, number 14, Elijah, Elijah Durham, is doing a heck of a job. That play, that drive, six plays, mm -hmm. six plays, 79 yards, time of possession, two minutes and 32 seconds. Nance to Durham from 32 yards out. Ward's got it teed up on the 30. Kind of a little pop kick, and that's whistled down. I, I don't think the referee had blown the ball ready for play. So we're going to do it all over again. Lake Orion's going to have to try to find, obviously, try to find some 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 consistency offensively. They, they scored the field goal early on with a short field, but uh, they're going to have to return the favor, if you will. They have pretty much hemmed in Billy Roberson. He's only had one breakout run that I can recall tonight. Ward's going to try it again. Pooch kit taking on the 20. Cut outside to the 30. Trying to cut outside and is going to be taken down at the 41 yard line by Vasquez. Another OAA red score at the end of the first quarter. Oxford zero, Adams zero. So as of right now, at the end of the first quarter, there's only the only scoring is going on here in Lake Orion. Yeah. <laughs> in the OAA red. Good start, good starting field position for Lake Orion. Their own 41 yard line. Their best of the night. That's why special teams are so critical. Special teams are so critical in determining field position. Jamari Cooper split wide right. Raymond Payne in the slot right. To bring it in motion. Handoff, Billy Roberson up to the 45, gain of four. It'll be second and six. Yeah, I don't know if he was he tripped up or he kind of stumbled as he's going through the line of scrimmage there. Still a four yard gain. Yeah. Again, coming into tonight's game, almost averaging seven yards a carry. So second and six, double, double wide, double slot. Roberson again, tripped up as he got close over the 47 yard line. I think he <clears throat> fell over one of his, tripped over one of his blockers. It'll be third down and four. This is key. Lake Orion comes into tonight's game averaging 44% on third down conversions. This would be a big one. TR got pressure, throws off the fingertips of Vasquez, and it'll be fourth down. Led him just a little bit. He couldn't get his hand out to corral it in. Yeah, but he, you know, Vasquez had had the separation on Blake Simmons there. So if he catches that, he's getting the first down and more, yeah. well into deep deep into uh, Lakers territory. And TR put some juice on that he ball. He did. Probably more than he needed to. Well, I think he's probably got a big guy running rushing to try to get him. I would too, try to get that ball away. Will Hoffman in punt formation. I don't know if, we, I don't know if you saw what Geno Smith said when Aaron Donald was rushing him this week. <laughs> it's pretty funny. High kick down by the Dragons on the 23 yard line by Trey Pakmara. And West Bloomfield will take over first and 10. Hey, during the sports season, Orion Neighborhood Television will be covering a large variety of games. 
Our sports coverage will include varsity football, like tonight, volleyball and boys soccer, and much more. Select games will be streamed live on dragonbroadcasting.org and will be played on our current, on our channel, Comcast Channel 10 and AT&T 99. Trying to get outside was Tate and McCartan brought him down. We have a West Bloomfield player shaken up, number 54, Jeremiah Benson. He's going to get off the field on his own power. We have a timeout while he's tended to. Next week, the Dragons will be here against Stony Creek. Our, we'll be here again for you on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS Streaming Service next Friday kickoff at 7 o'clock. Looking at the drive charts in the game, Lake Orion's had four possessions, their longest drive of four, yard, or four, four plays, three plays, three plays, four plays, four plays. And so, um, got to be able to, we talked earlier about one of the keys being time of possession, winning that time wow. of possession battle. Right now, West Bloomfield's leading that, and they're leading in the score. Nance throws incomplete drop by number six, Cameron Flowers. He had to go down for it and just couldn't bring it in. Well, that's just it. I mean, Nance is running this way towards the press box or towards the Dragon sideline, and he kind of pulls up. He knows where the yeah. line of scrimmage is. He kind of pulls up, and he has to throw back across his body. That's a tough throw to get something on. I think he had some yardage here if he just tucks it and runs. So it's third down and 15 for the Lakers. They come out trips right, single wide left, single back in the backfield. Nance, back, looks, throws, got a receiver, got Flowers. First down at the 45 yard line. That's an impressive ball. That's an impressive ball thrown to Flowers. Because Pacmar is not in bad position whatsoever. He's yeah. in that inside hip. Right there, it's just a half a man away from knocking yep. that ball down. Dragons put good pressure on Nance that time, but nice throw, and nice it's good, completion. It's good concentration by Flowers with a guy draped all over him. So first and 10. Joey Debrinkit came in and brought down Dunton. They're giving them a gain of one to the 46 yard line. It'll be second down. It's second down and nine. Second and nine. Flowers comes out split left. A double a tree trips to the right. Completed out that way to Durham. He's got enough for a first down over the 45 of Lake Orion and down to the 43. So one thing you get late Oxford, you know, ran that that. Tight packages, tight offensive, yep. you know, in, inside zone they're running. And you got West Bloom for just the next week, just the opposite. They're spreading the field horizontally and vertically, throwing the quick screens. Out this side, completed to number seven, Jaden Allos. Atlas. Down to the 33. At 
Carson Negri in on the stop. One of the leading tacklers on the Dragons ball club coming into tonight's game with 21 total tackles. Twins right, single wide left. Backs in an offset eye with Nance in the backfield. Nance looking, got pressure, spins away. I never saw him throw the ball. He threw the ball because it was caught by Marquise yeah. Morris for a touchdown. Morley we, touchdown. We got a penalty back here. There were some very crushing blocks by the West Bloomfield lineman. Yeah, there's a flag back on the 48-yard line. Coach Hilbers is not a happy man. And this one's coming back. No, I, I saw a man scramble and I never saw him throw the ball. That's a huge, huge penalty against the Lakers. We'll check the call. Should be from the spot of the foul, too. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that was a hold. I don't know what that was. Trying to prevent that crackback type block. Yeah. And so when Nance was came this way towards the Dragon side and then rolled back, that's when the uh, Lakers offensive lineman cracked back. Couldn't tell on who. That's where they threw the threw the penalty. So it, it's first down and twenty. Back in the day, that would have been illegal, but we're all yeah. about player health and safety right now, and as we should be. And so thus that that call is made. I'm just determining where the ball is being where the penalty is being marked off from. Here's the penalty, right, or the sorry, replay right here. Nope, that's gonna be a cut. He rolls back out and watch number 70, boom. I'm sorry, number three right there. Yeah. Nigel Dutton. He really didn't square up on him. And that is a crack, crack back. Right there. But that, you know, that's, pass rush lanes are so important, especially against a quarterback like Nance. If you don't attack the, the pass rush lanes, the outside are, aren't attacking the back shoulder. If the front pressure is not attacking the front shoulder, that's what happens. So, um, a, a player like Nance gets out and about and can make things happen with his feet and his arm. That is a 15-yard foul from the spot of the foul, which means right now we have first down and an acre. <laughs> The ball is spotted on the West Bloomfield 37 yard line. First and 40. First down and a, you're right, about 40. They haven't reset the scoreboard yet. I don't think it goes that far. <laughs> yeah, first and 40. I don't think most teams have a first down and 40 play in their playbook. No, but, but you, got, way, you the, got a series, you got four plays to get, you know, yeah. so you got first and 10 play calls and see if you got, if you look at it that way. Scoreboard shows first and 52. Nance drops the snap, looking, going deep. Or you can do got that. A receiver down there, over through. Marquise Morris, and he threw that ball a long way. He threw that ball a long way, about a half step, maybe a step further than where Morris was, but Pac Mara did a pretty good job staying on his back hip once again. 
Now they've corrected the scoreboard to second down and 41. It's second down and 41. Twins to the right, single wide left. Backs will be in an offset eye with Nance from the gun. Back looks, got a receiver in the open. Complete up to midfield is Nigel Dunton. And it'll be third down and about 25 26. Nancy throws that little swing route. I'm sorry, the, 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 the wing in the bat and that goes out to the flat. Nice open field tackle on Dunton. So they're, they're calling a third down and 28 from midfield. Lakers are going to come out with trips left, single wide right. They're going to take a delay here or a timeout. Timeout. West Bloomfield has one timeout to the half. The Dragons with their full complement of three. You know, Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road, have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Athletics since 2009. Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. Give them a call at 248-814-7559. Another OAA red score at the half. Clarkston zero, Stony Creek zero. How about that? Wow. Clarkston with a big win last week, their first of the year. Yes. Uh, yeah, first of the year, excuse me. In week three, which you don't hear of very often for a Clarkston program. That's what we said last week, that Clarkston was too good to, be, to go 0-2. So third down, four wides, Nance. Looks, throws, complete over the 40 to the 44. It's still going to be fourth down and about 15. We'll call it 14. Just really, really been impressed with Nance, just the way he keeps his feet moving and keeps, yes. again, his eyes down. He's really got a strong arm, too, whether he's throwing the short routes or the deep balls, really got a strong, accurate arm. And this, right now, the ball's kind of in that no man's land we talked about. It's it's almost too far, too far, too close in for a punt and too far away for a field goal attempt. So you might as well go for it. And I think they're going to take, they're going to call their third time out with a minute 55 left to go here in the second quarter. So we talked a little bit ago about play charts and Lake Orion's four drives so far this game, three plays, three plays, four plays, and three plays, resulting in three points. Short field, the first drive of the game, uh, got them the, uh, the field goal for three points. But you look at West Bloomfield's drive chart, first play, first drive, two, two plays, which ended in the interception. But then after that, the next drive, eight plays. Next drive, five plays. Next drive, six plays. And this particular drive is a nine-play drive so far here at 4th and 14 yeah. with under two minutes to go. So, again, Lake Orion has had the ball only 13 plays compared to 15, 21, 30 plays for West Bloomfield. And I, I don't think the Dragons have put it in the air yet tonight. Quick kick. Hit at the 20, took a dragon bounce. That is going to be about a 12 yard punt. Doesn't do much for your average. 
Nance on the quick kit. So the Dragons will have a minute 47 seconds and 73 yards to go. Dragons will get the second half kickoff. Dragons have all three timeouts left too. Four wides, double wide, double slot. Robeson's a lone, lone back. TR got pressure, gets out of it, looks, throws just out, out of reach of DeBrinket. He was under pressure. I don't know if uh, the West Bloomfield defender broke late. The, the ball thrown to Brinkett in the flat, but Jamari Cooper was right down that right seam. There wasn't many, there wasn't any West Bloomfield Lakers defenders around him. And Davis Swain put the initial pressure on TR and almost got him. Roberson got a little running room up near and has the first down. Nice, 10 yard run for Billy. Nice time to call that play. Well, they get a good uh, West Bloomfield pass rush. You run that little draw play. Roberson does a good job of getting the first down, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. Minute 34 to go. But do we have a penalty? They're bringing it back, which I did not see the flag, but they're, they're walking as if there is. Holding against the Dragons. Backs him up 10, it's a spot foul. So it is second down and 17. Those are the things you can't have. I haven't mentioned it yet, but Lake Orion comes in tonight averaging almost eight penalties a game. That's a lot. It is. So <clears throat> double wide, double slot again. Vasquez in a slot right, Raymond Payne in motion this side. Roberson up the middle, got a first down and more and gets out of bounds with a minute eight left. Good heads up play to get the first down and get out of bounds. He almost ran, ran it back to the same place he ran the last play, which was brought back because of the hold. So Allows you to preserve the timeouts. First and 10 from the Dragon 40. One minute, eight seconds to go. And we have an encroachment penalty on West Bloomfield. So that'll move it up and give the Dragons a first and five. West Bloomfield's fifth penalty of the night. Haven't been big ones. But uh, penalties nonetheless. Moves it up to the 45 yard line. Trips right, single wide left. TR back, looks, throws. Got a receiver, Dom Novak. He's got a first down. And Jamari Cooper was running like he was shot out of a gun and he was wide open along the right sideline. Oxford six, Adams nothing at half. Wow. In the OAA red. First and 10, TR back. Got pressure, looks, throws. And we have a flag I down think, around the 40 yard line. I think they're gonna call Bryce Rowe as Jamari Cooper's coming across the the formation coming across the field as TR is running to the side near sideline. I think Rowe was holding Jamari Cooper. Holding defense. So that'll bring them up five. and make it a first down, which it was. So 
Excuse me, they're marking off yeah. 10. Now holding, yep, yep. Drive, little drive extenders. Ball spotted on the 36 yard line. <clears throat> with 58.6 seconds left. Dragon stay, double wide, double slot. Vasquez in motion, he gets the handoff, tries to cut it upfield, got a little opening, fights for extra yardage over to 30, down to the 28. Nice hard run by Vasquez, good cut back inside. And Lake Orion's gonna take a timeout with 55.4 seconds to go. Lake Orion Marching Band will perform at halftime. The Dragon going to perform at halftime as well? The Dragon's always performing. <laughs> He's got his, it's uh, country night tonight, the theme night. Yeah. He's got his cowboy. Where's your cowboy hat? I missed the memo. You got your boots? Nope. Nope. Stirrups, nothing, none of that nope. stuff, huh? Nope. You, you didn't ride here on your horse? Didn't ride. Okay. Nope. All right, fair enough. Came by Chrysler. <laughs> So it is second down and three for the Dragons. TR dancing around, trying to get free to throw, shakes a tackle off and gets out of bounds. I think he's gonna be just short of the first down. The little pump fake that he provided as he's rolling out kind of created a little bit of separation on that pursuing defender. Got him awfully close to the line to gain, but he is a yard short. And I think that's one of the differences we've seen between the two quarterbacks tonight is Nance will run if he has to. TR will run because he can. TR goes under center. On third down, hands off, Roberson, first down, Dragons. Inside the 25 to the 23, 22 call. They're trying to go quick as that those chains are set without having to use that. There, there goes the clock as they try to use yeah. Not use their timeout. Trips left, single wide right. TR back, got pressure, shakes out of it. Trying to get outside and gets the ball away. As he was going down, there was a receiver in the area. What he did there to just avoid that and even get the ball off is impressive. Yeah. I know it's an incompletion, it brings up second down and 10, but boy, there was a couple times where he could have gone down, didn't go down. Just under 29 seconds to go, 29. Still have two timeouts. Blake Simmons did everything he could to try to catch him and just couldn't get him in time. Second down. TR looks, throws, complete, dropped. Intended for Vasquez. He had Bryce Rowe right on top of him. And Jackson couldn't hold on. 22.3 seconds left. It's third down and 10 in a 10-3 game. Trips left, Cooper's the lone wide out to the right. TR back, got pressure. Dumps it off to Billy, inside the 10, inside the five, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. What a nice play call. Absolutely.
That Laker pressure all day long. You run the little screen. Roberson get the ball to your playmakers in space. You did that. 22 yards later, touchdown, Dragons. Dragons within an extra point of tying it up. Going into the half. 13.9 seconds to go. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball's down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 13.9 seconds to go. We're tied at 10. What an impressive drive for the Lakers. Obviously, they're, excuse me, for the Dragons. Their best drive, obviously, of the night. Nice blocks downfield. Cut back inside. That's all he had to do is shield Roberson from the inside, number 74. Brennan Elison did a nice job. Shield him. Roberson cuts inside. Has a nose for the end zone. We're tied going into halftime. So the important thing now on the kickoff is put the ball on the ground. Get it past that first wave of blockers and get it on the ground so they have to fall on it. By far, again, nine plays, 73 yards, 22-yard touchdown pass. And they get the ball, as you said, to start, to start the second half. Yep. Hoffman's got it teed up. Whistle blows, excuse me. Taken on about the 15 yard line. Cuts it upfield, he's got a seam and taken down at the 48 yard line was Durham. That's something they're gonna to have to make adjustments on at half. Whether you're kicking them in the ball here That's or especially on defense. He's been, uh, he's had a heck of a first half. Yes, he has. And it's one of those things where you can't get the ball in the hand of a dangerous returner. 3.4 seconds to go. Nothing they're going to do will surprise me, whether they take a knee or throw it deep. Davis Swain line, lines up as a tight end left. And we have a delay of game against West Bloomfield. So that'll back them up five, back to the 43. Twins right, single wide left. And now Lake Orion's gonna take their third and final time out of the half. So the chess match continues late in the second quarter. And that's what these coaches on both sides of the, of the, of the field work on all week long, right? The chess match and the gym. How do you exploit uh, the other the the offense? How do you exploit the defense? What do you do on special teams? How do you play the game within the game? And uh, that's what makes this game so great because everyone's got a role. Everyone's got a job uh, offensively, defensively, yep. coaching staff wise, uh, coordinator versus coordinator. You name it. I mean, when it's all said and done, it who plays the the best, most consistent each and every night while eliminating as few, making as few mistakes as possible. First and 15, the Dragons have eight men deep. Throw out on the flat to Flowers and he's gonna be taken down after no gain as the first half comes to an end. At the half, it is West Bloomfield, 10. And the Lake Orion Dragons, 10. And halftime is sponsored by Malasha's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, located at 3800 South Lapeer Road at Lake Orion. 
Malasha's Palace has been serving Lake Orient's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 248-393-2222. And Detroit Wing Company. Established in January of 2023, Detroit Wing Company in Oxford is located on the northeast corner of Drainer and Lapeer. Offers 20 signature sauces for their classic wings, boneless wings, and hand-battered chicken tenders. With guest favorites including honey barbecue, garlic parmesan, classic buffalo, honey chipotle, whiskey barbecue, and sweet heat. The menu also includes signature crispy chicken sandwiches, mac and cheese, poutine, and more. For more information about Detroit Wing Company, visit their website at DetroitWingCompany.com. We'll be right back.
Getting ready for the second half, the Lake Orion Dragons and the West Bloomfield Lakers tied at 10. The scoreboard for the second half is underwritten by Builders Custom Flooring. Builders Custom Flooring is a family-owned and operated flooring business located conveniently in downtown Lake Orion. Their showroom floor features a selection of hardwood flooring, carpet, and luxury vinyl and a wide variety of tile and backsplash. For more information about Builders Custom Flooring, visit their website at builderscustomflooring.com. Chris, tied at 10. It wasn't exactly the shootout we thought it we'd be, but each team has handled the ebb and flow of this game. Yeah, you know, Lake Orion at half, 112 total yards. 81 rushing, 31 passing. 22 of those were on that last touchdown run, to, or I'm sorry, touchdown pass, excuse me, to Billy Roberson. The last drive was their best drive, obviously, resulting in the touchdown. Nine plays, 73 yards, time of possession, 134 to make it 10-10. So um, not a lot of offense for Lake Orion, but they put points on the board when needed. And uh, again, they get the ball at halftime uh, to start the second half. And... Uh, one thing Lake Orion hopefully focused on at halftime is stopping number 14, Alicia Durham. All right, a, a, a junior wide receiver, six catches, 155, excuse me, 155 yards in the first quarter. So, uh, first half, excuse me. So, um, things to target, things to watch for. Um, but when it's all said and done, we didn't expect this 10-10 ball game. We expected no. more of this shootout, as you mentioned, but. Uh, it's good football nonetheless. One you know, thing one thing that got me is that the Dragons were pretty much committed to the run in the first quarter and late in the second half they opened it up and put the ball in the air. And they're going to have to do that against a team like like uh, like West Bloomfield. Uh, they got to mix it up, both run and pass and they got to contain those 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 pass rushers when they do pass, but that opens up the run game and vice versa. So those are that's the cat and mouse game. That's the chess game that you talked about in the first half is being able to to go blow with blow, go blow to blow with the, the opposing team, but to also do what you do well. And uh, you know they ran that screen nice to end the second quarter there, and uh, now we got a 10-10 ball game. Dragons won the coin toss and deferred, so they'll get the ball to start this third quarter. A couple scores from around the OAA red. Fourth quarter, Clarkston seven, Stony Creek three. A lot of low scoring games. Yeah. Um, what do we got here? Third quarter, Rochester Adams 12, Oxford zero. So those are the scores in the OAA red. And obviously we're 10-10 here. Vasquez and Roberson drop deep for the Dragons. And number number 81, Josh Vincent, senior kicker, will kick off. Whistle blows. 
Vincent approaches. Pink shoes it down to the 15. Roberson picks it up near the goal line. He's going to get hemmed in and dropped. He made a play. I don't know if the ball hit him in the foot as it was heading into the end zone, which meant he had to you know, then pick it up. Because he was tailing it back trying to make a play, and it looked like the ball may have hit him in the foot. Yeah, then he tra chased it back into to the one-yard line, picked it up before it went into the end zone and, and tried to bring it out. And, again, that field position. Yeah. Field position on special teams, critical. We'll see how the Dragons respond so being it's buried deep into their own territory. First and ten from the four. Novak splits wide left. Raymond Payne in a slot left. Roberson stands a yard deep in the end zone. And we have a flag. Dead ball. Delay a game on the Dragons. You're on the four, and you're going half the distance back. Repeat first down. Dragons stay in the same formation. Joey Debrinkit was in a slot left, and the Dragons have to take a timeout. This is not going to make Coach Bell really happy. No, but I think it's just one of those things where you've got to kind of settle things down. I mean, yeah. we're back to square one. We're back to 0-0 zero, zero almost. Even, you know, it's 10-10 and we're tied. And we got a half of football, and they, I'm sure they went in and Worked on making some adjustments, making some changes, and then they come back and get the kick um, ball kicked to them and don't make a very smart decision on what to do with yeah. the ball. And, and then they get the penalty, and it's just a couple things back to back. And I think Coach Bell's just getting out there and saying, hey, guys, settle down. we got a long, way, long football game left. Let's go out and play our game, give ourselves a chance to, to do this thing and win this game. And so I think that's uh, a smart timeout by Coach Bell. Like you alluded to in the pregame, take it play by play, first down by first down, score by score. TR under center, handoff, goes nowhere. Raymond Payne took the handoff on the sweep and was met and driven, fortunately driven sideways. Yeah. Xavier Davis, big 55, six foot, 250. And that interior defensive line position was the one who was clamoring for the safety. Second down and 13 from the one. Roberson gets a little breathing room up over the got, 10 to the and 14. Got, and they got the And I think they got him on a horse collar. That's a way to break three, free. Keep the feet running, keep the feet churning, keep the ball secure. And right there is where yep. oh, you see a face mask. Got up on the end of the helmet. Turned his neck around, and that's what they're going to call. Add 15 to that. Personal foul face mask. We'll add 15 onto it, and that's a way to get out of the shadow of your goalposts. Good run by Billy, and follow it up with 15 more. Moves the ball out to the 29-yard line where they were at the 1. And you look at the, that at a starter drive, and 29 is not bad, but when you look at it compared to where you started at the yeah. one, <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of breathing room. Yeah. First and 10. That's a big penalty. You know, and even in that drive that the Dragons scored on before the half, there was two big West Bloomfield penalties yes. that they had that attributed to that drive, and this is a big one here. Seventh penalty of the game for the Lakers. We have a dead ball unsportsmanlike conduct against West Bloomfield. 
and that's going to add 15 more. Composure. Yes. That's what, you know, what it boils down to, composure. Knowing what to do, what not to do in a key situation. The ball is now marked on the 44. They have gotten 43 yards on one run and penalties. 30 yards of penalties. Nice Joey bounce. Breaks it outside, still on his feet, spins, and is going to be taken down after one of the most exciting three yard runs you'll ever see. Nice bounce to the outside by Roberson, but really good closing speed by the Lakers defenders. Number 12, Jameer Benjamin, ended up making the play, but Roberson avoided the tackle of Nigel Dunton near the line of scrimmage. Jameer Benjamin in a nice stop. Cooper goes wide right to Brink. It's in a slot right. Payne goes in motion. Toss back. Looking for a hole, and he's going to be dropped at the line. Maybe a yard loss at the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be about a four-yard loss. Tell you what, I've, I've mentioned Blake Simmons' name quite a bit. He is a sophomore linebacker. He seems to be everywhere. He seems to have a nose for the yeah. football. He's only listed, listed at 5'10", 170, but he's got that sense yeah. of, I could find my way through traffic and find that ball carrier, and he's doing that all day tonight. He's a good compliment to Davis Swain. So third down and 11. TR rolling right or left, looks, throw through the hands of Raymond Payne who took a shot in the back from Nigel, Nigel Dunton and it'll be fourth down for the Dragons. Really good, really good throw by T.R. Hill. Turned his shoulders on the sprint out and put the ball in the perfect spot where only one person can catch it. Problem is, Payne didn't. Dunton's dropping deep. Will Hoffman sets up around the 30. Good snap. Short, high kick. Takes a Lake Orion bounce inside the 30 to the, about the 28 yard line where West Bloomfield will start off first and 10. I get the sense that it's the pressure by Justin Tyler on that that forced that yeah. ball to be punted and punted high. Because if he extends his foot going that way, that ball's going to be blocked. Yes. Now we, we talked last week with some of the things about the evolution of the kicking game. And it's, it's the old thing you used to see on a poster that the best thing to do is keep your composure when everyone else around you is losing theirs. That's that's the the mantra of a kicker. And this one's coming back. Bentley on Lake Orion. You didn't see what the signal the was. Illegal so. motion. It'll be fourth down. So yeah, if you're the Lakers, force them to punt it again, sure. force a bad snap, force a high snap, force a, a, a nice return, whatever. It's fourth and 16. The ball's marked on the Lake Orion 38 yard line. And Hoffman will try it again. High kick, better effort this time. Hit and kind of did a quasi Lake Orion bounce and went out of bounds at the 25 yard line where West Bloomfield will take over first and 10 with 9-11 left to go here in the third in a 10-10 game. And I'd like to try to get a read in but they're moving these offenses in and off the field in a hurry so West Bloomfield setting up already. First and 10. Davis Swain was a little late in getting out. 
Nance on the handoff to Flowers. He's dropped for about a two-yard loss. It'll be second down. Carson Negri in on the stop. He's had a good game tonight. Absolutely. So second down. We have a penalty marker on the field at the 21 yard line. Walking it back again. Holding against West Bloomfield. We talked earlier about you know, Lake Orion to come into the game uh, averaging almost eight penalties a game. That's West Bloomfield's ninth penalty of the game. Yeah. We're only nine minutes, nine minutes left in the third quarter. And they've had three of them in the last three minutes. So first and 20, Nancy's Seam. back, looks, throws, got a receiver, breaks a tackle over the 30 up near the 40. And taken out of bounds, they're going to call him down at the 40-yard line. Complete to Caleb Caudle. Caleb Cald Caudle was open. Cameron Flowers was open. I was yelling seam. I saw number yeah. six come open in the seam. But again, when, you, when the threat to go deep is there, you can run those little hitch routes, those short routes, and then you get your, again, get your the ball to your athletes in space. They got the ball to Caudle right there. He did the rest. First down, West Bloomfield. From the 40, Nance on the handoff. Inside handoff to Dunton. He's over the 45 to the 48. DeGraff and Reed on the stop. It'll be second down. DeGraffenreed's had a good good game today. DeBrinket's had a good game tonight. Up the middle, nothing there. Nance is dropped after no gain. Andrew Parker's been in on a few plays. Third down. Yep, it's going to be third and 11. I'm sorry, third and one from the 49. Handoff. Breaks a tackle and is belted down over midfield, down to the Dragon 48. Dunton on the carrier on the carry and he was lambasted. He was but Carson Negri had him in the backfield for a loss and he was able to elude and get into Dragon territory for the first down. It's the little things making those plays make a big difference in a football game. Yeah. First and 10 for West Bloomfield at the Dragon 48 yard line. Motion this side, handoff, met, broken tackle, and Negri, Negri takes him down after a one-yard gain. Same thing right there. I know he only got back to the yeah. line of scrimmage or maybe a yard, but McCartan was in there on the play. Could have had a, a loss of two or three on the play. Those are the little things that make the big difference. Yeah. So it's second down and nine. From the 47, 6.20 to go here in the third. In McCartan's defense, he was being blocked while he almost made the tackle. Yeah. Nance back to throw, looks, throws, got a receiver. DeGraffenried brings him down at the 30. It'll be a first down. Again, that's the threat of the vertical speed. Yeah. When you when you when you think you're going deep, all they got to do is those defensive backs are sitting back. You're on the curl inside. Boom! Nice pitch and catch from Nance to the wideout for a first down. Lakers. Marquez Morris on the catch. First and ten for the Lakers. They come out trips right, single wide left, single back in the backfield. Nance looks, throws off the hands of Caleb Cottle. 
And Nance kind of threw it as he's running the slant route. He kind of threw it on his back shoulder. Cottle tried to get his hands up to his back left shoulder, bounced out, and incomplete. He leads them. He leads Cottle on that ball. He's still running. Yeah. Second and ten. Double wide, double slot. Nance back, looks, throws. Caught in and out of the hands. Intended for Flowers. And I'll tell you what, that was a pass that he just made with a flick of the wrist. Flick of the wrist, and those are two balls in a row that, again, got to be caught. Yeah, Flowers. We, we saw a game in the, in the pro level on Thursday night where yes. a team in red. Yes. <laughs> Dropped a lot of footballs, and as a result, they end up losing football game. You just can't do that and expect to win. And Flowers is down. He's not getting up. Training staff comes out to look at him. It looked like a fairly innocuous effort on the catch. While we have this break in the action, we will take a short break. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students of the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While maintaining a high level. Third down and 10 for West Bloomfield. Flowers got off the field on his own, under his own power. Nance back. Rolling. Eludes a tackle, looks, throws, and caught at the 11-yard line by Jaden Allos. That will be a first down for West Bloomfield from the 11. That's just Nance, a playmaker, making a play. I mean, that's all he is. And he puts the ball in a perfect spot on the crossing round when you get flushed out of the pocket. Receivers are taught to receivers are taught to do exactly what Alos did right there. Cross so Nance can see him. Perfect ball, perfect yeah. catch. Great effort. Run off the left side by Marquise Morris. And how lucky I was looking at that replay. How lucky was Nance because just as the ball was snapped, he diverted his eyes from the ball and brought it back just in time to make the catch on the shotgun snap. So second down and six. Huge third down. That's what defensively yeah. you want to get off the field on third down. You can't give up those big plays. Those are backbreakers. Nance looks, throws. Knocked away. Pakmara, nice Trey, job. Yeah. Trey Pakmara. He got he got burned once on a on the first touchdown, knocking it into the receiver's hands. Did a good pass breakup on that play. Now it'll be third down and six. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Nance, pressure, down he goes. 
DeVrinka got in there first, and DeGraffen Reed cleaned it up. What a great place to meet, right yeah. at the quarterback, huh? Yep. Let's have a party right there. Well done. That's the way you pass rush a, a quarterback like Nance. All right, from the outside in, force him up into the pocket, collapse the pocket. He can't go anywhere. Well done by that Dragon defense. Ryan McCartan got in on the fun, too. So it is fourth and 11. We're going to have a 29-yard field goal attempt. Ball is down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 327 to go here in the third. It's now 13 to 10, West Bloomfield. We'll remind you again, filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 5th at the Orient Neighborhood Television Studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and line of dialogue that is to be included in their film. You will have until 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 10th, to submit the film. On Wednesday, the 11th, the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages, it costs $25 per team to enter, and the winners will receive a cash prize. The contest benefits the North Oakland Community Coalition Program. To register, go to www.orionontv.org or call 248-393-1060. High short kick. Vasquez takes it at the 17. And he's wrestled down at the 30 where the Dragons will take over first and 10. That West Bloomfield drive, 12 plays. 75 yards, time of possession, 5 minutes and 44 seconds. A 30-yard field goal to put them up, 13 to 10. But as I look at the drive chart, three big plays for West Bloomfield, plus 25, plus 17, plus 20. A couple of those yeah. on third down. Yep. And, they, and that's the thing. They got the play when they needed the play. So first and 10. Twins... Right, single, wide, left. TR. Up the middle. Got a little seam over the 40 to the 42. Got a little seam. Let the, let the defense or the wide receivers clear the defense and find that little seam and run that little quarterback draw. Nice block downfield by Don Novak. Springs TR Hill for a huge first down. First and 10 for the Dragons. Raymond Payne lines up left, twins to the right. Debrink, nope, Vasquez is on a wing right. He comes in motion. Roberson up the middle for about two. It'll be second down as we close in on two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Ball on the Dragon 45. Double wide, double slot for the Dragons. TR back, got Novak over midfield into West Bloomfield territory at the 49. It'll be third down and two. A little quick hitter. What do you dial up on third and two in Laker territory? A little outcut right little there. Outcut. There you are. Dom, Dom Novak. To the 41, first down for the Dragons with a minute 40 to go in the third. 
Know where the chains are, drive the defender off, run the out cut, boom, nice pitch and catch. Hill to Novak. Just like it's supposed to be designed, right? Trips right, single wide left. Roberson, quick hitter up the middle. Gets over the 40, down to the 39, gain a two. It'll be second down. You get the sense that that West Bloomfield defense all night has been zeroed in on Billy, which has given TR a little opportunity. But they, they, they pretty much decided we're not going to let number three beat us. TR. Trying to slip one tackle, gets gang tackled by three Lakers at the 44. It'll be third down and five. This is a big play because, I mean, you talked about this, this area being kind of that no man's land. You yeah. punt the, the field goal, you're too long for field goal, but it's a big play. On third down, TR back to throw. Tucks it in, he's gonna run it, got a first down and a lot more. Down to the 21 on third down. He picked up about 15. Drops back to pass. Feels the pressure, steps up in the pocket like he's supposed to. There's a run lane for him, and he tucks in and goes. He knows where the sticks are, puts that ball on the outside arm, gets out of bounds. First down, Dragons. First and 10, 35.6 seconds to go here in the third. Dragons on the move. TR under center. Falls down. TR picks it up and just falls on it. I don't think he ever got the center exchange cleanly. Well, I thought it was a situation where he hit the hip of Roberson as he was trying to make the handoff. Okay. And that ball ended up, but nonetheless, big loss on the play. We have another West Bloomfield player down on the 25 yard line. West Bloomfield is already down two of their starting linebackers. I think this is a cramp. They're out there stretching his leg out. It's not an overly warm night tonight, but as we've always talked about, if you're playing Friday night, you better be start hydrating on Wednesday. Yeah, he's cramped up. Well, what a football weekend we're going to have in this area. I mean, and maybe I say it every every time we're here, but it's just like there's nothing better than the fall time. I mean, it's it's everyone's going back to school. I mean, maybe the kids don't think it's going back to school is fun, but but you know what? It does. Going back to school allows nights like this to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you've got communities from both sides and watching and coming here and watching 3-0 and football teams. And, and you've got, again, the band, the cheerleaders, the, you know, the, all that stuff. And, and that's what makes this so enjoyable. It's like every week there's a buildup to Friday yes. night in your community. Whether you're at home or on the road, there's a buildup. And, you, and the, the school, the, the, the administration, the staff, the, the student athletes, the students, they yes. can feel that excitement. And that's what, you know, I know we're way past our high school years, oh, but there's, yeah. there's times where it's like, I'd love to be able to go back to high school, experience it, and do it all over again because um, these nights are special. And yeah. uh, I hope the student athletes, I hope the students that are sitting in the stands can appreciate um, what sports, youth, high school sports, can, and can do to themselves and the experience that they have through the high school years. Injured player was number 15, Darian Hicks. And he's getting some assistance coming off the field. I mean, you know, down the road we'll be talking about homecomings and things of that yep. nature. And that, those are those are memorable, memorable events that uh, all these, these students can, can take part in. So... Um, yeah, I'm biased. I'm a football guy. I love sure. football, but boy, oh boy, I think the fall is the best time of year for, 
for obvious reasons that football is a big part of it. Homecoming this year will be against Farmington, I believe week eight. And then to end the season, the Dragons will make the trip down to Celine to visit C.J. Carr and the Celine Hornets. It's a good football team. Yeah, it is. I've seen them play this year already, and they're, they're good. We saw them last year. Yes, and they were good then. Mm -hmm. T.R. tried to set up a screen and broken up by Jonathan Gabriel, who from his linebacker position just didn't move. He just stood there, watched the receiver come, and broke the pass up. Yeah, and Rober, it was intended for Roberson on the screen, yeah. and, and uh, you know, Roberson did, actually did a nice job of becoming a defender in that yeah. situation. So, so uh, Gabriel wouldn't knock it down or pick it off. Excuse me. So it's third down and twenty from the thirty-one. The Dragons have to make it to the eleven. On third down, TR rolling right. Gets a block. Davis Swain was chasing him. He got it to Raymond Payne, but out of bounds. And it'll be fourth down. Just shows you how critical that, whether it was the bot snap or the, the, the missed yeah. handoff, the, the mesh point back there, that ball and that 10-yard loss to start on first and, first and 10 to make it second and 20. Yep. That's tough to come back from, it no is. matter where you are on the field. And the Dragons are going to try a field goal. This is going to be a 49-yard attempt by Will Hoffman. Vasquez holding. Ball's down, kick is up. It's going to be well short. As the quarter ends, we played three, and it's West Bloomfield Lakers 13, the Lake Orion Dragons 10. A couple scores from around the OAA Red. Clarkston 14, Stony Creek 10 in the fourth quarter. Rochester Adams 12, Oxford 0 in the third, last I have there. We have our student crews from Lake Orion High School up with us tonight. Colin Ensminger and Aiden Novak up here in the booth. Colin's doing stats and Aiden's working the board. Or did I get that backwards? No, I got it right. Doing a great job, by the way, and that's what yeah. you know. That's what's pretty cool about being here at Lake Orr and the experience that the students get in in this space. Um, you, you and I have been a part of this for a long time and doing this, but but the experience they're getting at their age, yeah. at their level, Absolutely. goes a long way in helping them hopefully find that career path that they want to get involved in. So, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. We also have a special guest up here tonight. Wherever she went, your daughter Taryn was up here. And she wants to get into sports broadcasting, too. And so she um, she's experiencing it from the booth. First down. Nance on the handoff. Up the middle is Dunton. And he's stopped by Carson Negri after about a yard gain. That brings up second down and nine. And Carson may have been a little bit oversized on that, but he stood him up and brought him down. Nance rolling right, looking, looking. Now he's just going to take it out of bounds after a one-yard gain. You know why? Because he felt pressure from behind. He also yeah. found, uh, saw a DeGraffin read coming at him. I go, I'm, not, I'm not taking yeah. that on. I'll gladly go out of bounds. So it'll be third down and six. Again, time now for the Dragons defense to get off the field, play the field position game, win the field position game, make a stop here on third down. Double wide, double slot look for the Lakers. Nance back, 
looks, throws, caught, and dropped. So the Dragons do exactly as you said. It was intended for Marquez, Marquez Morris, and he went down to get it and just couldn't hold on. Of course, he had he had the Graffin read right in his back pocket too. Good series defensively for the Dragons. Now again, look at the field position they could get based on where they're at. Jordan Alice in punt formation. Vasquez sets up around his own 40. 11-16 to go in the game. Almost blocked. Takes a West Bloomfield bounce right to the 40-yard line. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I was... I was watching Alice take that, take his approach on that punt, and he took a lot of steps, and he almost got that ball blocked. You can't take that long. You got to take one step, two max, and get the ball off. Clarkston won their second in a row. They beat Stony Creek 14 to 10. That's a final. They are now two and two on the season. As we mentioned, whoever is the winner of tonight's game will be the only undefeated team in the Red Division. Clarkston 2 and 0 oh in conference. Double wide, double slot. Vasquez in motion, double handoff. Cuts it inside, Raymond Payne. Broke a couple tackles. He's got a first down into West Bloomfield territory at the 49. They're calling it the 48. First time they run that flow. Flowing one way, handoff coming back the other way. Payne knew where he needed to get to, got into uh, to, uh, Laker territory to the 48, first and 10. Now it's a matter of working the play, working the clock. Billy breaks it outside, slips one tackle, gains about six. It'll be second down. Good gain on first down. Down three, but you don't have to rush into things. You've got right. plenty of time. You did lose, uh, use that one timeout early on uh, in the third quarter, but control the ball, control the ball. Keep that West Bloomfield offense off the field. On second down. Billy up over the 40 near the first down. He'll be about a yard short. It'll be third and one. So a very important third down to keep this drive alive. Debrinket goes into a slot left. Haynes in a slot right. Billy slips it outside, got a first down and more inside the 35 to the 34. On third down, he just slipped it outside, got the first down plus. Got the first down plus to the 34 yard line, and you keep that clock moving. Vasquez replaces to bring it in a slot right. Billy up the middle for four. Call it three. They're going to mark it down at the 31. It'll be second down. And that offensive line, Bre Brennan Eliason, Landon Morris, McCartan, all these guys opening the holes. Double reverse again. Gets maybe a yard. And 
Payne was kind of roughly taken out of bounds. He's not walking too good. He's going to get a rest. Debrinket will replace him. Another big third down opportunity for the Dragons. Last time Dragons couldn't convert on this play and ended up kicking a field goal, trying to kick a field goal attempt. Tom Novak gets free, 10, five, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. And we have a flag down at the 24 yard line. Let's check it out. Dom Novak did a tremendous job breaking tackles. And it's going to be, be a block in the back on the Dragons. And about Four or 5,000 officials are expressing their displeasure. Let's see if we can see it on the replay here. Underneath, the, where do they get the block in the back? They get it right, right there. Right there. Yep. Right there. Jacob Escobedo, Escobedo on the block. He blocked Brody Pacour in the back. Makes it third down and 10. TR hemmed in and dropped. Looked no like that game. was going to be a designed quarterback draw. And there he is again. Davis Swain on the tackle. Loss of one on the play brings it fourth down 11. Last time Coach Bell yeah. kicked the field goal from this, and not quite this distance. They were a little closer. What's he going to do now? Fourth and 11. They're going for it. They come out trips right, single wide left. TR from the gun. Back, looks, throws. Incomplete. Novak had it. And in the process of being brought down, lost control. So West Bloomfield will take over on downs on their own 35 yard line, 7.14 to go. The Lakers are up by three. And yeah, two great athletes going at it. That time Bryce Rowe, the cornerback who's committing to CMU, he, he won that battle. And as a result, West Bloomfield takes over. But here's the thing, Coach Bell, he kicked a long field goal, at a long field goal attempt last time, goes for it on fourth down. What does that tell you? It tells you that he trusts his defense. They've been playing well enough that, that he feels like he wants to give his offense a shot yeah. on four downs if he needs to. That's what he's done the last two times. Tight formation for West Bloomfield. Hasn't worked out in their favor, but nonetheless, he's trusting his defense. Nance from the gun. Hand off to Graffin Reed's got him. Down he goes after a loss back to the 26-yard 20, line. They're going to call it. It's a nine-yard loss. It'll be second and 19. Can you see why? Yeah. Can you see why you, you make those decisions? The defense is playing really well tonight to Graffin Reed and others in the back. Boom. Graffin Reed could have almost taken the handoff yes. there. He was in so fast. And then you follow up. All right, with Andrew Parker and others. Samuel second, Blakely in there as well. Excuse me, Doug. Second down and 19. Nance gets jammed up. Looks going deep. Almost intercepted by Vasquez, and he's going to see that in his dreams tonight. Now Parker was the one that almost had it. That's Leitsk stating his case. We have a penalty marker on the field. I think it's a sideline warning against West Bloomfield. And Nance just throws it up and just trying to make something happen. 
I think it was just mistiming of the jump. It's coming down as the ball is getting to him, Parker. It was Parker. Yep. One person we have not mentioned lately, Durham, who had 156 yeah. yards in that first half. Excuse me, 155 yards in that first half. He has not caught a ball here in the second. Nance getting pressure. Slips out of it, and down he goes at the 30. Relentless, relentless dragon pressure. Wasn't a sack, but boy, oh boy, it did just enough to bring up yep. a fourth down and long. Fourth and 15. So the Dragons are going to get the ball back. I don't know. I, I don't know if you feel it up here. I, I, I certainly do. The Dragons are losing, but it seems yeah. like momentum is going to the side the dragons, of the Dragons. The Dragons are sprinting out onto the field. They can't wait to get the ball back. Alice Parker got in there. And this will be down at the 42-yard line of the Dragons. 5.30 to go. Dragons have it first and 10 at their own 43. Remember what we talked about at the beginning. Lake Orion comes in tonight averaging 40 yeah. points a game. Lakers 34.3 points a game. We've got 23 points total in the game. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we were going to have a track meet. Instead, it's been a defensive struggle and a good one. It sounds like it's been that way the whole OAA yeah. Red tonight. Low scoring football games. The Dragons, first and 10. They come out in a double wide, double slot. Raymond Payne is back in there in a left, left slot. Roberson. Up the middle for about four. It'll bring up second down. Ball be marked on the 46. Now you're going to start to see a kid like T.R. Hill, who we've talked about, yeah. grow up, the maturity. You see if he can take that next step with this drive against a 3-0 West Bloomfield team. Vasquez on the handoff, close to a first down. He's going to be about a football short. I think it depends where they mark it. They're the officials are coming in and they're calling first down. When they first came in, they it looked like they were marking the ball just short. So first and 10 for the Dragons from the West Bloomfield, 48. 4.30 to go. TR, Billy up the middle. Gets about seven. They're giving him six. It'll be second down. Don't go anywhere, folks. Tell the dog to wait a while. We can't go anywhere, no. Doug. We got to finish this game, and I'm, I'm glad we are. <laughs> so second down, they're calling it five. Vasquez in motion, Billy up the middle. Got a first down and more down to the 30 yard line and the, move it up to the 29. Straight up the middle run. Coach Bell sending the play in. Work some clock. Lake Orion's got two timeouts left. We're at 3.30 left to go on the fourth down three. Robeson churning for yards, took the initial hit and leaned forward down to the 29. Give him five. 
You're right on that word you used, Doug. Lean. I mean, you saw that lean. He yeah. gets hit, and because he's leaning forward like that, he falls forward for another couple yards. Explosive. Sh should have been second and seven, second and eight. That is oh. a that is a tired young man, but he's not going to come out. Second and five. Nice. Raymond Payne faked the handoff on the reverse and got around right end and got a first down to the 12. Now once that ball's set. And we got a flag. And it's against West Bloomfield. How many big penalties have they had against them? Bryce Rowe did something. There's the handoff to Payne. Payne keeps it. Fake to Vasquez, he keeps it. Inside the 10, excuse me, inside the 15 yard line. Somebody from Lakers was awful hot. It was Bryce Rowe, number 24. He's over on the sideline with his helmet off being talked to quite sternly by the coaching staff. That will move the ball down to the seven. And it'll be first and goal for the Dragons. Bryce Rowe is still being talked to over on the West Bloomfield sideline. What do we got here? The officials are talking, congregating. Determine whether it's a first and goal or first and four. Now the ball is marked. It's first down, and it's first and four from the seven. From the seven, Billy Roberson down to the five. His nameplate's coming off his back. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and Rowe is still not in the game. Debrinkit checks in for Vasquez. It is second down and three from the six. Billy Roberson down to the five. Actually, they're going to keep him at the six. Reginald Hayes right there in on the stop. West Bloomfield's going to take a timeout with a minute 27 to go. This is why you play football. You play football. Number three in the state in Division One versus number nine in the state in Division One, right here at Lake Orion. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better no. football game tonight. A little sloppy with some of the penalties, yeah. the big penalties, especially for, for West Bloomfield. But nonetheless, the, the defenses have been outstanding. Yes. And usually when these two teams have played, as we've talked about, even in years past, these have been high-scoring football games. Not tonight. The last time they played at Dragon Stadium, I believe, was 56 to 51, if I remember that game. We started it on Friday night and finished it on Saturday. Touchdown, Jamari Cooper. It's about time, young man. Congratulations. What a pass by TR.
I called him TR last week. I'm going to call him yeah. TP because that's a touchdown pass. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. And now this is critical, this extra point. Yes, it is. And Jamari Cooper made the most of his chance. Sure hands. Hauled it in for the touchdown. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball is down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 124 to go. The Dragons retake the lead 17 to 13. Hey, what a game we got tonight. And don't forget, we'll be back here next Friday night against Stony Creek. Now wow. here's, here's where the coaches, number one, have to take control of their sideline. The game is not over yet. You can celebrate in a minute and 25 seconds. And you got to be smart to who you kick this ball to as well. Exactly. Again, like we said, we haven't talked about Durham here in the second half, who was a did a heck of a job in the first. He hasn't had a touch this second half. Yeah. Well, Flowers is back deep. He's back out after cramping up. Will Hoffman tees it up on the 40. Nine-yard drive, 50, I'm sorry, nine-yard. Nine play drive, 58 yards, time of possession, 4.06. Touchdown pass, six-yard touchdown pass. High end over end kick into the end zone. West Bloomfield will take over first and 10 at their 20. Now is the time that defense steps up. And Will Hoffman's getting mugged as he comes off the field. Stay deeper than the deepest if you're in the secondary. Let's get some good pressure on Nance. Keep him in the pocket. Keep everybody in front of you. Make sure we're gang tackling. All those things have got to be done on this drive for the Dragons to come out on top. Dom Novak goes in at a safety position. Keep them in bounds as well if you can. Yes. Force them to use their timeouts. Trips to the right, single wide left. Nance going to try to run down. He goes. Five-yard loss. Nobody touched him. He tripped over his own lineman, lineman, but it's the pressure of Brandon Nepchuk that forced him to step up in the pocket, trip over his own lineman, and go down. We're Great close, pressure. Closing in on one minute. Second down and 15. Low snap. Nance picks it up. Gets out of traffic. Stops, throws back. Caught. Guess who? Yeah, Durham. First down at the 33-yard line. That's a heck of a throw by Nance. Heck of a way to come back for the fall, yeah. to the ball for Durham. Clock starts running under 50 seconds. Nance back. Got time. Looks, throws. In and out of the hands of Dom Novak. Almost had a pick. You know, DeGraffenreed, Negri, and Nepchuk, they're the three-man rush. That's all yeah. they've got going, and they're doing a great job of putting pressure on Nance, forcing him in the pocket. 40.4 seconds left. It's second and 10. Nance looks, throws, caught. That's the first time we've called Davis Swain on a reception today from his tight end position, and he gets enough for a first down. And the key thing for them is they stopped the clock, right? Yes. Got out of bounds, stopped the clock. Yeah. Got out at the 45, 34.4 seconds. Now they split Davis Swain into a slot left. Throws for Davis Swain. Kept him in bounds. Kept him in bounds. 
after a gain of three. Grady Harbin, nice open field tackle on a big receiver in Davis Swain. West Bloomfield calls timeout. 24.5 seconds to go. It's going to be second down and about seven. And that's what they're doing. They're going to put their big guy, Davis Swain, going to Colorado. They're going to put him out in pass formations because, let's face it, he's a big guy, and there's not much in that Lake Orion secondary outside of DeGraff and Reed that's going to be able to go on with him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, it's a situation right now. If, you, if you're Nance, if you're West Bloomfield, you're going to have to look at the vertical stuff. You've got one timeout. You're going to have to start to utilize that speed and see how you can maybe three verticals, four verticals down the seam. Maybe there's a mix-up in the secondary. That's what they're going to have to look for. They got trips right, single wide left. Field goal does you no good. No. And Davis Swain is lined up as a tight end on the right side. Listen to the crowd, Doug. Yeah. Number three in the state, I said it before, versus number nine. Yeah. And division one, both three and oh. On second down, Nance. Looks, throws, complete out to Dunton. He gets out of bounds and picks up the first down in Dragon territory at the 46-yard line with 22.7 seconds left. Again, smart, knowing that the Dragons are staying high, staying deep. Let's get what you can, get the first down, get out of bounds, move the chains. First and 10. Trips right, single wide left. Nance drops the ball. Throws caught and brought down was Davis. Was that Davis Swain? No, that was no. Durham again. Durham, okay. I saw the one. I couldn't see what was on the other side of it. Yeah, that's a couple a couple times that Nance has done that. He's dropped yeah. that snap, and I, I think it's because he's thinking pressure. He's feeling pressure in before he's securing the football. He's looking downfield and see, seeing a guy like DeGraff and Reed come up. He's seeing a guy like Nepchuk. He's seeing a guy like McCartan. And, and because he's had pressure, and, and he's not securing the ball first. And so uh, tribute to that Dragons defense for providing that pressure yes. and, and setting the tone and letting him think, you know, now you're playing with his mind and he's not securing that football. It's a second or third time he's done that. Give you a side note down to our producer director, Joey Tysick. I'm not going to stop this for a read. We're going on until this is over. Second down and six. The ball is on the Dragon 40 with 14.8 seconds to go. Crowds into it. Dragons gonna rush three. Nance back to Graf and Reed. They got him. Five, four, three, two, one. The game is over. The game is over. The Lake Orion Dragons have shocked the world. The Dragons, 17. The West Bloomfield Lakers, 13. You are watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back. From a very joyous Dragon Stadium, the student section just rushed the field. The Dragons beat the West Bloomfield Lakers 17 to 13. 
Chris, this is one for the ages. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, we said it all night long. It's like we expected 40 plus points, 30 plus points, and we saw 30 total from both teams. Yeah. But, but what a great football game in that just defensively, both teams stepped up and did, did what they needed to do at the appropriate times. And Lake Orion finally took the lead late in the game, and, and you know what? They did the job defensively. Coach Bell was trusting that defense all night long, making decisions offensively that maybe didn't work out at times, but he trusted yeah. that defense so much that they were able to hold him off at the end for the huge victory. And we saw a couple couple players. Billy Roberson was gassed. Raymond Payne got digged up, and these guys never quit tonight. T.R. Hill, the whole cast of characters. I think we talked about it before that last drive. Let's see how TR really grows up, yeah. and if he can, and he, he did, and so did the rest of the offense, and, and that's what makes so tonight so enjoyable is that they beat one of the best teams in the state ranked-wise, yeah. and uh, you know what? They should be proud of their efforts. They should be proud. They're going to enjoy tonight. All right, they're yeah. going to get back at it tomorrow, but uh, what a great football game, and uh, here he is right now. So, Coach, what did you think of the game tonight? Jeez almighty. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what, you can't, with those guys, you can't relax. So I think hit zeros. Yeah. And uh, I'm just so proud of my guys. You know, it's, it, we knew it was going to be a four-quarter game. We didn't give up any big plays. We just kept fighting. I think we wore them down at the end. Huge character drive there at the end. We're talking about the growing up party. How about Jamari beating yeah, the Division yeah. One corner there in the slant for yeah, the touchdown. Sure. TR threw a great ball. and So I'm just so proud of our guys. We were just talking about it is, yeah, you came in for the score to go ahead, but then you trusted your defense to get it done, and they came through. Defense played outstanding. Ricky and the guys, the coaching staff had a great plan, but those guys played. They played so hard. Kept, kept pressure on the quarterback. The secondary was, oh, there's some tremendous talent on the, on the other side, and those guys have been, been I mean, they've been catching deep balls all season long, so we, for the most part, we kept them in front of us all the time, made plays, and, and I just couldn't be happier. You might think otherwise, but to me the drive of the game was your touchdown drive before going into half. Up to that point in time, the drives that you had were three plays, three plays, four plays, and three plays, and then you put seven points on the board just yeah. going into half. Talk about that drive and the importance of it. That was huge. That gave the guys a lot of confidence. Um, you know, 10-10, it was a, you, know, you had that momentum shift. The momentum shift, and we knew we were getting the ball to start the game. Now, we didn't know we were going to get it on the two-yard line, <laughs> but we could get the ball to start the second half. And I was happy, you know, we had some some penalties, but we got – Got the ball out to the 50 before we kicked it down. So, I mean, just that kind of game. I mean, it's just, it was, you know, one play makes a difference. Now, guys, I, I'm just so proud of them. Enjoy this one. 24 hours. Yeah. 24 hours. That's 24 on hours Story Creek. You got we it. We got on Story no, we Creek. It's going to be less than that. 24 hours. <laughs> we're, we're Coach, good. Good. Hey. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thank Congratulations, you. Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, we go in Stony Creek next week. And right now, you got the Lake Orion Dragons sitting atop the OAA Red, and they're undefeated. I don't know if uh, other teams around the OAA Red believed this. I know Lake Orion was projected to be third overall yeah. in, in the preseason rankings, if you will, or predict predictions. But you know what? This team believes. This team believes that they can be good, and they're showing it week in, week out, and especially a game uh, tonight like you saw against West Bloomfield. And that's one of the things we've alluded to is they kind of, you get the feeling they've been flying under the radar. West Bloomfield gets all the, all the press. Clarkston gets all the ink. Lake Orion Dragons are 4-0. Oh. It's good, got, got a good ring to yeah. it, and they're good, they are going to enjoy it. Yeah. From the field for Chris Fritching, and our entire Orion Neighborhood Television crew, our producer, director, Joey Tysick, Joe Johnson, taking the shots as always on the sideline. Thank you for your work. Until next week against the Stony Creek Cougars, I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone. <laughs>